Um, our record is what it is. We're three and four. We're still in it. Is there, is there anything that getting to 500 does for y'all mentally? Does that make a difference aside from, yeah, just it's a number, but does that do anything for y'all mentally to get, get to that point? Yeah, you, you want to have a winning record. Uh, and this is the, the next step towards that goal. Uh, so, got to go 1 0 this week to get to 4 4. Given what the Eagles have on their side of the ball on offense, they're explosive, one of the most explosive offenses in the NFL. How much emphasis do you guys have as an offense about playing better than you have the last two weeks in terms of scoring and just overall operation? Yeah, we got to play great this week. We know what they have. We know they have really good players. They're going to make plays on an offense and defense. So we got to play great on both sides of the ball. What stands out about their defense? They got good players. They play within the scheme. They're well coached. We've played against this style of defense before. It's always tough. Uh, they got a good pass rush. They're gonna they're gonna pressure you. Um, so you got to handle it well. You got to get the ball out quickly, and you got to push the ball down the field when you find your opportunities. You played against Fangio a few times now, different stops. I mean, is his scheme pretty much the same, but does he adapt to players he has, or is, what's, the, what's it look like to you? He adapts year to year. Um, you know, a little more too high than he used to than he used to call. Um, I would say he mixes it up a little more than he, than he used to, keeps you on your toes, sends a pressure here and there. Uh, so you've got to be ready for a lot of different things. Uh, they mix it up front-wise, personnel-wise, uh, quarters, single high, cloud. So uh, they do a good job disguising everything, making everything look the same. Over the years, you've really, in like key moments, you've leaned on T and in really critical spots, uh, even going back to the Super Bowl run. What's it about T that makes him a guy that you can kind of turn to when, when you maybe need to throw more so than other, other throws? Um, I mean, T's just a great player. Uh, and I'm lucky enough to play with enough great players on our offense that I'm, I can throw the ball where the defense tells me to throw it not having to think about other things. You know, I'm confident in any of our guys to, to just go and win. Uh, and T's been playing great. He's going to continue to play great. Uh, he's going to continue to to make contested plays, win his one-on-ones, and make plays down the field. Uh, so I'm going to continue to go to him. How much do you allow yourself or do you even think about uh, that, that this could be the last year that you have both to get Jamar to throw to him? I mean, have you thought about it all um, as you went through the season? No, not since the season started. Did you think about that at all before the season started? You have a lot to think about in the off seasons, yeah. You think about your own career, a lot of different things, how things can play out. Uh, you know, that's life. Once you're in the season, there's almost no other thinking going on other than what's my job today, try to get better. Do you, do you uh, keep up with the quarterback class of 2020? Do you have any kind of relationship with uh, Caleb? Mm, not, not really. You know, we, we were – at the Heisman ceremony together, uh, we played against each other in, in college. The last time I saw him was when we played him there in 2020. Um, I don't really have a, I wouldn't say I have a relationship with Jalen. How, how important has Zach Moss been in pass protection and how much do you trust him as much as you guys move him around and go out in the center, picking up guys on the outside? Yeah, he's, he's done a great job. Uh, he's really filled, filled that role that we needed expertly. Um, He's getting the feel for where he needs to be in his checkdowns, the timing of when he's going to get the ball in those checkdowns. He's, he's really been playing well. What do you remember from that game in 2020? We tied. It wasn't very fun. <laughs> are, you, are, you, I was about this, are you kind of upset that Fletcher Cox is a player anymore? I can't say that, no. <laughs> he's, a, he's a great player, always was, uh, always disruptive. So. I'm glad he's retired. But was there a part of you that maybe wanted to kind of get back after the uh, hit in 20? No. Was John 20? No. no, I hope he's still sitting on his couch enjoying a nice steak dinner or something. Let's stay off the field. <laughs> was that game the most you've been hit and the hardest you've been hit? That's tough to say. It was so long ago now. Um, I remember getting hit a lot, but I remember getting hit a lot a lot of times. So. That's football. Does that feel? Does it feel like four years ago? Does it feel longer? Than that? Yes and no. You know, it feels like a long time ago, and then it also feels like yesterday. 
I guess that's how life is when you get a little older. You guys, 0-3 um, at home, I know each game tells a different story as to why the outcome is what it is, but is there any theme that you can point to that you guys need to correct at home to start winning some games here? No, I wouldn't. You know, like you said, each game is is its own thing. I don't think that you can – there hasn't really been a, a consistent – theme game to game this year of things that we haven't done well or we have. Each game is its own thing and you go to them correct based on that. Joe, what can you say about how this team has responded after an 0-3 start? We've got two in a row. We've won three or four, so we put ourselves back into it. That's all you can say right now. There's still a lot of football to be played. Um, only seven games in. We've got ten games left. Not even halfway through it yet, so the uh, story's still being written. Even though in some ways, in the first few weeks of the season, you started with three, but you were able to do some good things, specifically on offense, but the outcome of games, like coming away from it, knowing that you won, like that in itself, does that provide confidence for you guys more so than just feeling like you did some things well? Yeah, of course. You always Your goal is to win the game. It doesn't matter. And nothing else matters. You know, you can throw for 500 and lose, and... You're gonna be pissed off afterwards. You know, my goal is to win games. And that's what we've done the last two weeks. We gotta keep it going. Is so, not caring what it looks like or how you play part of maturing as a professional, or has that always been you, no matter what level? You always want to win. You know, I'd say early in my career, I, I, you know, early in your career, you're more. You want to go out and play well. You want to help the team win. You want to do everything that you can to help the team win, and that's. That's often enough, but then very quickly you realize that you just want to win games. It doesn't really matter what your stats are, what people think of you, you just want to win games. Is there any extra feeling of excitement or anything when you walk in the locker room and the white helmets are hanging up? No. Do you, do you take, uh, you've got to pay, Jalen's got to pay, Tua's got to pay, Justin's got to pay, like all the big quarterbacks in the class have got big second years. Do you take a lot of pride in the fact that y'all as a class have done really well? Like, is there any, is there any part of you that, like, you feel a certain type of way about that? I haven't really thought about it. Um, I think, you know, we're, we're each our own player. I'm, I'm happy for, for all the guys and that they pl played well enough to, to get their contracts. But um, I can't say I've really thought about that. Uh, well, well, I, now we're kind of talking about it. Have you kept up with the Tua situation at all? No, not really. Um, I know he got hurt a couple weeks ago, had another concussion, so I've, you know, I was obviously thought about him in the moment, but I haven't thought about it in a while. For, for guys that maybe, I mean, obviously none of us are going to be quarterbacks, so, you know, how do you gauge when you're at that level that you're at, you're in the position you're at, gauging what you can do to help your team versus personal safety? When you've had those situations in, in the past, how have you kind of managed, you know, handling all of that as you figure out what's best for you? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm gonna go out and and play. If I can drop and throw, um, I'm I'm not entirely. I don't. I'm not sure that decision is is my decision. If I can drop and throw, I'm gonna go out and play. Um, and then I think it's up to the decision makers whether my limitations when I'm hurt hurt the team enough that I need to be sat down. Um, so I, I always take that mindset. If I can go out there and uh, complete balls, hand the ball off, drop, throw, then I, I'm going to go out there. Philadelphia's defense in the last three weeks has played really well. I mean, at a ridiculously high level. Is there anything you can point your finger to where they've done something differently, or what do you think? They're getting great, really good pressure on the quarterback. Um, you know, their, their secondary is playing aggressive. They, they've done a good job. It, it'll be a challenge for us, but uh, you know we faced challenging defenses before. Are you more or less inclined to take off and run when you feel pressure than you did earlier in your career? Mm, I probably move around less. Probably more confident in, in you know my ability to make a lot of different throws from a lot of different platforms within within the pocket. Um, pick and choose my spots where I extend and I run because. That's something that I'm I'm really good at, uh, but just try to pick my spots where I can and can. Joe, you've always downplayed the, the uniforms whenever you're wearing. For you personally, 
why? It just doesn't matter to me. Like I would, <laughs> I'd wear this out there, whatever. Like it looks cool, it does, but uh, I'd play in just about anything. I'm just happy to be out there. Hey, after the Giants game, you talked about how you felt a little bit sped up. How did you feel like you played against Cleveland's pass rush, knowing that you're going to face another really good one this week? Yeah, I was happy with how I how I played on Sunday. Um, you know, I felt like for the most part I was pretty accurate and made quick decisions and didn't let the the rush get back there. And I think our offensive line played well. Um, could have run the ball better, and we could have taken advantage of some some different opportunities that we didn't. Uh, could have made some more plays down the field, but there's always room to improve. But uh, you know, I don't think I let the let the rush get to me. The age of analytics is also the stats for everything, IPA, UPA. Everybody. Is there a stat that you look at? Is there a stat that interests you uh, that, you know, that you look at for yourself? Mm. Completion percentage, I would say, is the biggest, for the most part, indicator of, of how you're playing. Um, if you can just find completions, get the ball in your guys' hands, and you're going to give them more opportunities to, to go make plays after the ball, go score touchdowns, get the ball in your playmaker's hands. Um, it's not always going to be the coverage that you ex expect versus the concept that you call it for. It's can you still get a positive gain in those looks? You know, some of the best plays are turn out to be two or three, four yard gains, but um, maybe you got pressure and you had to slide in the pocket, you get hit, but you find the back. Um, just trying to keep keep the ball in your guys' hands, let them give them more opportunities to go make plays. Do any of the analytic do any of these new analytic categories? I would have to understand like what goes into the formula to really understand whether I care about it or not. Like there's a lot of like there's a lot of ones that people use that I don't know like what is weighted within the formula higher than others, so I can't really make a decision on whether I care about that or not because maybe maybe yards per attempt is weighted too highly, maybe touchdowns are weighted too highly, maybe completion percentages, maybe they're taking into account things that they think matter that you know you don't really think about as a quarterback because it doesn't really translate to winning games so um I'd have to do a deep dive on the formulas and the weighted values of these analytics to really understand them, and I can't say that I've had time to do that. Is there one particular, like, like QBR, or like, is there anybody, like, is that one that, like, an example of that, or just out of curiosity, like, what's, what comes to mind, and you're like, I just don't know what goes into that one? Um, yeah, I'd have to, yeah, QBR, um, you know, I think, I know passer rating is weighted heavily towards touchdowns. Touchdowns don't really necessarily mean you're playing great. You could throw a dime and get tackled at the one, and then you run it in. Um, I think yards per attempt is also weighted pretty highly in that, and that's pretty dependent on how you play offense. Um, EPA, I don't know what that is. I've never seen the formula for that. Those are the three that I like advanced analytics that I know. I don't know the other ones. I think you've said in the past that you judge good practices by how few times the ball hits the ground. How have you done this year and the team done this year in that regard? How would you assess that? Yeah, you know, I think that that's that more rings true later in the week <clears throat> when you start to dial in your like you've talked about the routes, you've talked about the concepts against each individual look and then you rep it at the end and then you're on the same page you know early early in the week it can be um you can be not on the same page and some balls hit the ground and you come back and talk about it and like hey i want you to run this route a little differently get a little wider in your release or change your split um and so friday practice uh and and late in the thursday third down practice um are are, are critical in, in that wednesday's more so uh you, you still think about it but not quite as much Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming here. And every day, I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, 
leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.